Major breaking news, a huge federal court victory in the state of New York. A federal district court judge in the Northern District of New York has declared that public housing's rules that forbid the possession of firearms in public housing is unconstitutional under the Second Amendment and shall hereforth be enjoined. Stay tuned. Now let's talk about this case of Robert Hunter versus Cortland Housing Authority at all when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of Disarmed, What the Ukraine War Teaches Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. Check it out. And a new book's coming out soon. You'll hear more about that later. All right, folks, huge win today. Remember, every brick in the wall for the Second Amendment is a victory for all Second Amendment supporters all across this great land. A huge victory here today in the case of Robert Hunter, Elmer Irwin, Doug Marin, and the Second Amendment Foundation. Congratulations to the Second Amendment Foundation and their lawyers against the Cortland Housing Authority in the United States District Court for the Northern District of New York. Specifically, a decision was entered today that says that the defendants are enjoined from enforcing their uh, handgun bans in public housing, specifically in the Cortland Housing Authority uh, in that area and all their agents. The decision was essentially based on the notion this is a civil rights lawsuit brought by the plaintiffs against the relevant people in the state of New York. And again, they are now hereby temporarily enjoined on a preliminary injunction basis based upon a 29-page decision by Judge Glenn Sutterby, who I will put a link to the decision down below. Judge Sutterby issued this decision in favor of the Second Amendment, rejecting all the various arguments by the government as to why the government can go out there and ban guns. If you're too elderly, poor, or some other kind of person that has to live in public housing, perhaps because you're disabled and you live in public housing, and the government basically said as part of their leases that if you want to live in public housing, no can do when it comes to handguns. And this decision says that is unconstitutional under the Second Amendment as applied to the states and localities, including the state of New York, through the 14th Amendment's Due Process Clause. In the complaint, the plaintiffs argued specifically, generally liberally construed, plaintiff's original complaint alleged that Cortland Housing Authority is a New York State public housing authority that receives federal funding and houses tenants, categorically bans those tenants, including the three individual plaintiffs who live in the Galatia apartments, from possessing firearms and other weapons on CHA premises by requiring them as a condition of receiving the benefit of CHA public housing to enter into a standard residential lease agreement which prohibits in the tenant's obligations in Article 9, Section P of the RLA, that the tenant shall be obligated not to display, use, or possess, or allow members of tenants, household, or guests to display, use, or possess any firearms, operable or inoperable, or any other weapons as defined by the laws and courts of the state of New York anywhere on the property of the CHA. The plaintiff's arguments continued on and said the following. Defendants must show that the firearms ban, which is a wholesale ban on the possession of firearms, is part of a historical tradition of firearms regulation, but it is beyond cavall that there is no historical tradition of banning firearms possession in American homes where the need for defense of self, family, and property is beyond, or I should say is most acute. Indeed, because the individual plaintiffs are of the extremely limited economic means and have no other homes or residences at which they may maintain or store firearms, the firearms ban unconstitutionally prohibits them from ever even owning firearms. Powerful language there by the plaintiffs, and I'm happy to report that Judge Sotheby agreed with the plaintiffs' arguments in all respects. Specifically, he does the basic Bruin analysis that says the text of the Second Amendment says the right of the people to keep their arms shall not be infringed. Here you have individuals that are not allowed to possess firearms uh, you know, in their homes where the need for self-defense is arguably the most acute, not the only place where it's important, but where arguably it's most acute, citing language from Heller. And then it goes on to say, now the burden shifts. The burden shifts since the text is implicated. The burden shifts to the government to come forth with a long-standing historical tradition. And here's where the government tries to play game games, game games. They try to say, well, there was no public housing at the time of the founding or any of these other relevant time periods, of which the only relevant time period is 1791. But because the 
Uh, Judge Sotheby is in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, and thus he is under the Second Circuit decision of Antonyuk. He has to follow that even though the Antonyuk decision is pathetically reasoned and will ultimately get blown up in the test of time. You mark my words. But for now, it is technically the law in the state of New York because the Second Circuit is the superior court, and Judge Sotheby is an inferior court under the Second Circuit because he's a federal district court judge in the hierarchy of the federal system. And Judge Sotheby did try to square, but he did point out that if there's a conflict between the Bruin decision by the U.S. Supreme Court and the inferior Second Circuit Court of Appeals. And you know, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals is inferior for many reasons, not least of which is under Article 3 of the U.S. Constitution. I think they're inferior for other reasons. We don't need to get in here. But the point is that Judge Sotheby has to follow the reasoning of the Antonio case by the Second Circuit. And he goes on to say that even that, that the reality is this, there have been poor people and homes and alms and other opportunities and, and ways for uh, people of diminished economic means to be provided for by the community going all the way back into American history. You can see the references to like almshouses and things like this uh, in various parts. I mean, we're not going to make a reference here to Dickens and A Christmas Carol, but of course that was the late, you know, mid to late 19th century, so we really shouldn't talk about that. But obviously, people have been trying to charitably take care of the poor, the distressed, the handicapped for a very long period of time. This is not exactly Christian charity. is not exactly brand new in the last hundred years. This has kind of been around, and there is simply no example of people being prohibited from able to use weapons to protect themselves just because they happen to be poor, disabled, or the like. So that is essentially what Judge Sotheby said here and said that the defendant's arguments simply cannot fly. I do want to make one point because it's such a historical point. Remember the old rule that says that back before Heller, the anti-gun community hated handguns and like rifles and shotguns. If you look at what they said in Heller, they says handguns bad, rifle shotguns good for self-defense. Now, of course, because of the Heller precedent, you look at the AR-15 ban cases and the anti-gun lobby is doing just the exact opposite. They say handguns are good for self-defense and rifles and shotguns are bad for self-defense. And what's amusing is that Judge Sotheby actually called out the state of New York here, the Cortland Housing Authority, because apparently the New York defendants in this case specifically try to argue that the tenants could possess rifles and shotguns and even crossbows and and therefore, they did not need handguns. And let me tell you, right here and right now, the Judge Sotheby really, really hammered them on this. This is what Judge Sotheby writes in his opinion on page 24. Defendant's justification also teeters precariously on the assertion that the firearms ban is not categorical in nature given that tenants may supposedly possess rifles, shotguns, and crossbows on CHA property without breaching the lease. Even if the court were persuaded by this assertion, the Supreme Court in Heller specifically rejected it as a ground for finding such a firearms regulation to be constitutional. And exactly what did the Supreme Court say in Heller? You know exactly what I'm going to quote because you're the smartest person in the room. The Supreme Court rejected this kind of argument undeniably in Heller by saying the following. It is no answer to say, as petitioners do, that it is permissible to ban the possession of handguns so long as the possession of other firearms, i.e. long guns, is allowed. It is enough to note, as we have observed, that the American people have considered the handgun to be the quintessential self-defense weapon. There are many reasons that a citizen may prefer a handgun for home defense. It is easier to store in a location that is readily accessible in an emergency. It cannot easily be redirected or wrestled away by an attacker. It is easier for, to use for those without upper body strength to lift and aim a long gun. It can be pointed at a burglar with one hand while the other hand dials the police. Whatever the reason, that's right, we the people, whatever the reason, we the people, whatever the reason, handguns are the most popular weapon chosen by Americans for self-defense in the home and a complete prohibition of their use is invalid powerful language that Judge Sotheby uses to knock out the defendants in the state of New York, relying upon the Heller case. Great stuff. Congratulations to the lawyers in the Second Amendment Foundation, to all the plaintiffs in this case, and we will keep you apprised as things develop in this case of Hunter versus Cortland Housing Authority. And that's it for today. Hope you learned something here today. Make sure you subscribe, follow me on X at Four Boxes Diner, and we will see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.